Today, pharmaceutical residues can be found in almost all bodies of water, in groundwater and occasionally even in drinking water. Because we're using ever more pharmaceuticals, the concentrations found in rivers are already high enough, in some instances, to be harmful to fish. It's not fully known how big the risks are, but there is no doubt that we should act now to avoid any great damage in the future. So, what can we do? Some might say, if tests prove that a drug is a threat to the environment, it should be banned. But can we deny a sick person a drug we know will help them? No, the patient's well-being must be the top priority. So it's not an easy thing to resolve. But if everyone works together, we can manage the problem. Politics, for example, can be used to make sure that doctors, pharmacists and consumers are informed about the environmental risks of a drug. It could also introduce laws legislating the maximum concentration that must not be exceeded in bodies of water for drugs that are proven pollutants. But wouldn't the best solution be for manufacturers to make drugs that are more environmentally friendly? In theory, it is possible to modify drugs so that they are both medicinally effective and easily biodegradable. They can also be designed so that only a tiny part is excreted unused. But it's not clear how many drugs can be improved this way. Focused research will be needed, supported by political incentives. So green pills are still a long way off. Isn't it then up to us as consumers to do something? In fact, we can all do something. The most important thing is, never throw any unused medication into the toilet or sink. If solid waste is burnt in your country, this is the best way to dispose of them properly. Less drug use means more water protection. It's better to only take drugs when a doctor or another health professional prescribes them. Also, not every ailment calls for drugs. Some reliable household remedies may be just as effective and even milder. But shouldn't this information come from doctors and pharmacists? Yes, they should inform their patients and customers when they can do without drugs. They can also use environmental information about pharmaceuticals. If, for example, two types of painkillers are equally effective, the one that is more environmentally friendly could be prescribed. Politics must, however, make sure that this information is consistent and easy to understand. But aren't hospitals actually the biggest problem? No, at the most they only contribute around 20% of the total amount of human drug residue that gets into the environment via wastewater. The largest part, therefore, comes from private households. However, for some medications like antibiotics or anti-cancer treatments, hospitals sometimes contribute more to water pollution than households. In these cases, it would make sense to equip a hospital with its own modern wastewater treatment plant so that it can eliminate a large amount of drugs from its sewage. So why can't we technically improve all public wastewater treatment plants? Selected pilot plants have been tested for this. They were equipped with activated carbon filters or ozone treatment. However, these techniques use a lot of energy and are expensive. For example, to upgrade all 10,000 wastewater treatment plants in Germany would cost billions of euros. Added to this, no one technique can eliminate drugs in wastewater by 100%. So the effort needed and the likely success of each technique should be weighed carefully. Taking all of these examples, we can see only when we act together can we considerably reduce drug residue in our water, starting today. By doing that, we are protecting our environment as well as our drinking water, now and for future generations.